Hyperhidrosis of the palms negatively impacts the quality of life of those burdened by the condition more than any other skin disease. The DLQI score, the Dermatology Life Quality Index, shows that palmar hyperhidrosis affects the quality of life more than even the most severe psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, or contact dermatitis. Treatment of patients with palmar hyperhidrosis improves patients' quality of life more than any other disease that dermatologists treat. For patients who fail treatment with topical agents and iontophoresis, the injection of botulinum toxin type A, known in the United States as Botox, is a relatively non-invasive and simple procedure to learn. The technique for Botox injections in the palm is similar to injections in other areas, such as the axilla, but for the palm, attention must be paid to anesthesia, since pain from injections is much more significant for the palm than it is for the axilla. Some patients may be able to tough it out with no anesthesia, but they are the extreme exception. Topical anesthesia with preparations such as Emla or Elamax are generally ineffective, due largely to the thickness of the stratum corneum of the palm. Vibratory anesthesia, using powerful vibrators to mask the pain, has been successful, but until recently, the gold standard for anesthesia has been the use of nerve blocks of both the ulnar and median and sometimes the radial nerve. A properly placed nerve block will render the hand completely anesthetic and will allow for the injector to carefully and precisely place the injections where needed with complete patient comfort. There is a low incidence of transient paresthesia after a nerve block and even rarer incidence of permanent nerve damage. If both hands are treated with a nerve block on the same visit, both hands will be useless for some time after the procedure and the patient will have to have assistance leaving the office. This video illustrates the use of cryoanesthesia using ice and pressure, which achieves very good anesthesia in most patients with complete safety. There are other ways to achieve cryoanesthesia using cold packs, liquid nitrogen, or ethyl chloride. In my personal experience, most patients who have had Botox injections using both nerve blocks and ice and pressure prefer the ice and pressure method. A simple home freezer ice cube tray may be used to prepare the ice for use in cryoanesthesia for Palmer injections. In order for the ice cubes to be more easily handled by the assistant during the procedure, freeze gauze pads in the ice so that the assistant will be able to maintain a firm grasp on the ice cubes and they will not slip out of the assistant's hands during the procedure. So that the assistant can handle the ice without freezing his or her hands, the assistant should first put on an insulated thermal glove and then the vinyl or latex glove to be used for the procedure. The patient should be comfortably reclining on a surgical on the firm surface on the table. Place an absorbent towel or drape under the hand since much of the ice will melt during the procedure. Injection sites should be placed as indicated. I usually inject three sites in each distal phalanx, two sites over the middle and proximal phalanges, and about 16 to 20 injections in the palm, making sure to cover the medial edge of the palm, which is especially important when writing. A total of 45 to 50 individual injections are usually given in each hand. Each injection should consist of about 0.05 to 0.1 milliliter, which should deliver about 1.5 to 2.5 units of Botox at each injection site. Assistant, place the ice over the distal fingertip and apply firm pressure for at least 7 to 10 seconds at the exact site where the injection will be given. Do it by a watch or count out the seconds verbally. Announcing the countdown for each needle stick allows the patient to anticipate what is happening and avoids what often seems to be a long and uncomfortable silence between injections. Announcing the countdown also tends to distract the patient, which can also be helpful. After seven to 10 seconds of firm pressure, the assistant should slide the ice to the next anticipated injection site, and the Botox should be immediately injected since the anesthesia lasts only for a second. Inject between 0.05 and 0.1 ml at each needle stick to deliver about 1.5 to 2.5 units of Botox in each area. I prefer three sites over the distal phalanx and two injection sites over the middle and proximal phalanges. As the ice applications followed by the injections move up the fingers, the injections should be continued along the palm toward the wrist. I find it convenient to continue the injections in a row from the base of each finger toward the wrist. 